Let's have food and wine. And we're going to do it all. Woo! Yeah! Let's food and wine. I haven't eaten three days to prepare oh for this. Oh my goodness. That... We've got the whole squad here for food and wine. Cassie, quit directing people. I'm directing people. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Cassie, Cassie. We are joined. We're joined by we're joined by Disney food blog Cassie yeah, today yeah. for health. Yeah. yeah, quit getting your yeah. DFB agenda all over all your content. Nice picture of all of you and your family photos. Okay. okay, we're splitting up today to do every single booth, see all the entertainment, all the merchandise, and more. And we're gonna take you with us for all of it. Woo! Are you recording? Yeah. Oh, hey. <laughs> Let's eat some good food today, okay? Drink water or else I will find you. I have a new water bottle. I will drink water. Don't lose it. And you if know. You don't put on sunscreen, I will find you. What happened here that I'm getting shouted at? <laughs> <laughs> We are here at Epcot International Food and Wine Festival. This is the largest festival of the year with over 25 food booths, as well as special merch, special entertainment, and more. We're gonna be checking it all out today. Uh, just a heads up, the festival does run through November 18th, so it'll be around for a while. There's a lot to see, and actually not all of the booths are even opening today, so we're gonna be visiting the festival a few times, I think, but very, very excited to see most of them today. All right, we are here a little early, but our first stop of the day is Coastal Eats, at least MNI's first stop of the day. So here we are with our Coastal Eats spread. The first thing we have over here is the lump crab cake with aioli and a vinegar slaw. And then for our drink, we grabbed the Cape Cotter, and then we also got the Oysters Rockefeller. Um, who put that deliciousness in my oyster? I did not know Sebastian came to food and wine. I'm glad he's here. <laughs> Coastal Eats, I, I, again, I wouldn't say best to fest, but like we're, we're running middle ground here. I don't know, I really liked mine. Really? I really liked mine. So for the crab cake, it's not going to be the best crab cake you've ever had in your life. I'll go ahead and tell you that. But for a theme park. Hence middle food, ground. Yeah, I mean, but we're at theme park. A you fair. have to remember That's where you're fair. at. <laughs> but it's really, I think it's super salty, which I like my crab cakes to be on the saltier side. There's a lot of really nice herbs. The breading is not super crunchy, it's very soft, so the whole thing is a little bit chewier, which I honestly don't mind because the slaw adds in the crunch mm. that I was missing. And then with the acidity from the grilled lemon, it's really nice. Yeah, a lot of people don't know what Oysters Rockefeller is, and it's basically baked oysters uh, with uh, breadcrumbs and spinach and a couple other like different ingredients, whatever, up to you, up to the dealer. I actually didn't mind this. Oysters are typically not my thing. I believe oysters are just a vessel to get the, ingredient, the other ingredients like cocktail sauce and horseradish sauce in your mouth but uh, there was a hint of Parmesan at the end which uh, it's not gonna slide down easy if it ain't cheesy I stole that from someone but as far as oysters go at a, at a booth at a theme park I would actually get this again the Cape Cotter picture this you're at a, or a normal bar and you order a vodka crayon this this is it. It's it's a vodka cranberry, but I would give it I would give it bonus points for being more refreshing than a typical vodka cran, and I think that's because of the lime. Super nice, very light. Um, the one thing that I noticed is at the end there's a nice tartness mm. from the pomegranate yeah. that I think kind of ties it all together. Super so, refreshing. Yeah. So, but you, when you're when you're on the coast yeah. and eating you want to be coastal refreshed. eats, you're refreshed with the oysters and crab. This is. I feel coastal. I feel coastal. coastal all right, so Cassie and I will be tag teaming today. We're gonna be together Woo! all day, which I'm very excited about. Me too. I know. Our first booth is actually in America, and it is the Flavors of America booth, which is a new booth here at the festival this year. You're gonna find cuisine from both coasts, I think New England and the Southwest, on this menu. So I'm excited to check it out. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> okay, so we're at Flavors of America. We got our food. What do we got going All right, on? we've got an Italian hot beef sandwich. We have chipino, we have chilaquiles. And we've got freshly baked carrot cake. And a beer flight. So let's dive in. First bite. This is our first food and wine bite. Okay, I'm kind of nervous. Wow, that's got a kick. That's got a kick I was not expecting. I knew it was gonna have a little spicy kick, but that kicked me in the throat. You're right. Yeah, the kick. It's kind of surprisingly spicy. But it's not, it doesn't stick in your mouth after you finish chewing. Like you don't need water immediately after you bite, unless you do. do you? I might need some water. 
Italian hot bean sandwich. I expected this to be a lot heavier than it actually is, but yeah. it's surprisingly light. It's pretty juicy and it's not too hearty, but it's it feels like it'll be filling. Mm -hmm. It's also not too herbaceous, but it's got a little that little spice, that little kick. Yeah. But yeah. I like it. Me too. It's not too intense. Like the kick isn't, don't be afraid of it. It's nice. Fry's trying to get the tail off of the shrimp. Which I know I'm not doing this the best way, but I think this leans more on that rich, robust tomato flavor. The That classic seafood taste is more in the aftertaste. And also it's not as floral as I thought it would be because the the stew is like supposed to, supposed to be saffron infused. But yeah, just tastes like that tomato. Up. I'm a little nervous because chilaquiles are my favorite breakfast that my mom makes. Oh. So will this stack up? I feel like I should be feeding you. You, you can have the first bite. <gasps> You put that in my mouth so fast. I'm so sorry. I have a new fork so I don't get fried cookies. Hmm. I think the flavors here are a little more mild than I like. The chips are getting a little weighed down and soggy with everything else going on with that egg. Really mild flavors with this one. The chips are basically like your standard Tostitos chips. They're not fried. Um, the ranch hair chicken is more sweet than it is spicy. The poached egg is definitely the best part. Yes. It's gooey, it's yummy, but overall I think that it's it's more something you'd expect to get at maybe uh, an Americanized chain Mexican restaurant rather than your local Mexican restaurant. I kind of think that it's a nice light snack, but you might want to head over to the Mexico Pavilion instead. Get your bite, Fry. Cheat wide, cheer you. I feel like we're like flirting with disaster. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> that was very rich. It's a little denser than I thought. I thought it'd be a bit more moist. It's definitely more leaning on the, the spice side mm -hmm. than it is the carrot. The yes. carrot flavor is very, very mild. It's definitely more like a spice cake. Oh, she's going in for another bite. I love the sweet stuff. It has that spice makes it very autumnal. Ooh, I think that if you're, word. if you're, oh thanks. If you're into a pumpkin bread at mm -hmm. Starbucks, this might be the dessert for you. You ready for the beer flight? Uh-huh. Okay, I've got Goose Island, you've got Rogue Dreamland. Cheers. This one's a bit more, this middle one is a little fruity, a little citrusy, not too dry, pretty light. Honestly, the light one is kind of dry. Your face, your face. I'm not on the screen. I'm not a fan. Really? Well, like do it. you drink beer? I drink light beer. Oh, okay. So, too heavy. But it's the light one. No. I can't tell if I like this one the best or not, which surprises me. Because I'm more on the lighter side. But this one, it's not too hoppy where I can't drink it. But it's not a light beer either. You know? You yeah. Alright, we have tried everything at the new booth in America. Here are overall thoughts. Um, overall, everything was good. We enjoyed it all. Um, however, I don't think that this would be my favorite booth. I wasn't like overwhelmingly surprised with anything. Not saying anything was bad. Yeah, I think the Italian hot beef sandwich was a nice surprise and I appreciate the variety of this booth because you've kind of got that Chicago, maybe northern influence with the sandwich, but then you have the nice southwest chilaquiles. And then but the overall, seafood with yeah. New England. I wasn't wowed, but I didn't regret spending money on any of it. I didn't walk away thinking like this was the best booth, but I appreciate it as an addition. Yeah, I agree. You really can't go wrong at this booth. They've got a baked mac and cheese dish, a bratwurst on a pretzel roll, apple strudel, tons of great beer that you can get in a flight, and even an alcohol removed Riesling that our team loves. Everything besides the wine has been around at the festival before, but that just means it stood the test of time, and rightfully so. Our next booth is gonna be the Alps. This is a booth that's located pretty close to Germany. It's between the uh, African outpost and Germany, right next to the Germany booth. So this one's gonna have a lot of raclette Swiss cheese and they have a new chocolate fondue that I am so excited to try. So I'm gonna hop in line and then we'll go ahead and get our spread. All right, I got everything from the Alps. So the big major thing here is the warm raclette Swiss cheese. Uh, one of them comes with Alpine ham, baby potatoes, cornichons, and baguette. And the other comes with all the same things except the Alpine ham, so you can get it without meat. 
And then there's also the dark chocolate fondue, which is plant-based, comes with berries, pound cake, and meringues. I'm very excited for that. I love fondue. Even though I'm not a big chocolate person, don't question it. Uh, Drink-wise, we've got the Stiegel Brewery Key Lime Rattler, uh, which is the beer, and then we've also got the Frozen Rosé, which did not survive the rain. One thing that you guys missed is it fully downpoured right when I got all of this, and I hadn't taken any pictures, and I was stressed. But it stopped enough for us to get good pictures. Look who I found. <laughs> gosh. I was lost too, let me tell you. Yeah, let me clean off the lens actually because it is. Oh, what foggy. is that? Is that cheese? Who could tell? Do you have a cheesy lens? There could be cheese on the lens. I've been unsupervised. Hey. Hi. You want to watch me eat cheese? Sure. <laughs> is that the warm raclette? And ham. Want to know the great news though? Yeah, tell me. There is are on. I never I did one. forget to tell Breed Love that the. <gasps> It's okay. I'm uh, anyway. The fondue was plant-based, and he's eating the plant-based meringue. Is I've never had plant-based meringue. It tastes like regular meringue. Mm. I keep forgetting it's plant-based. They did it. They did it. They cracked the plant-based meringue code. They pulled it off. The fondue is very good. That is the first thing that I've had today that I've been like, I'm going to be getting this regularly at the festival. Isn't the fondue good? I haven't tried the cake. I'm so sorry. I'm rubbing off on Quincy. You're gonna be so annoyed. Yeah, when Quincy's we're both plant based. Plant -based. Too. <laughs> this is literally so good. I wanna. Are we gonna drink this at the end? Like, we, we literally. We have to drink this fondue. Yeah, there's not enough dippables, so you have to drink it, I think. Alps Eaton. Um, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed this booth. It's a very heavy booth and it's a very hot booth. And it's very hot during food and wine because it starts in the summer and fall in Florida is very hot too. As the raclettes go, I thought they were both tasty. Raclette is just like a super melty like Swiss cheese. Uh, it goes all over the potatoes and it's really good. All the vegetables are very good and purposely, perfectly cooked. I love the cornichons in both of them. It really cuts the like more like richness of the cheese with that nice vinegar acidity. The bread is perfectly crusty on the outside and soft on the inside. I wouldn't typically go for this just because I'm not a huge cheese fan, but like this is a cheese lover's dream. My favorite thing here, by far the fondue. That's got to be one of my favorite things that I've had out of food and wine ever. I love chocolate fondue and this is dark chocolate fondue, so it's not really sweet. I love that it's plant-based. The cake's a little wonky. That's where you can kind of taste the plant-based, but you can't tell in the meringue. And I love fresh fruit and chocolate fondue. I think that's a must get even on a hot day just because fondue is so good. Also, if you give it a sec, it does cool off and it's not like super, super hot. It's just like regular fondue. So I love that. I'll probably be getting that many times during the festival. Um, as for the drinks, the beer, it's very floral. It kind of surprises me that it's like a key lime beer because I do get more floral from it, but I taste the lime. If you're usually a cider drinker, this might not be sweet enough for you, but as a beer goes, it's a pretty sweet beer. Very refreshing on a hot day, and I think like really nice for like a Florida vacation. I don't know that I'll get it again just because it's not my speed, but um, the Frosé tastes like your typical Frosé. Refreshing, summery. Rose all day, that kind of vibe. Um, definitely a great option for a hot day. Overall, Alps gets a thumbs up, but not the biggest thumbs up I've ever given anything, you know? Onward to the next. This booth has it all. Waffles topped with fruit, waffles topped with chocolate. It's got it all. Okay, maybe it, it doesn't have it all, but it does have waffles, and they do them well. They've also got some savory braised beef. Which is very good. And it's on top of Gouda mashed potatoes. Which are very good. I mean, can, you can't argue with that. This is another booth that doesn't necessarily have a jaw-dropping menu, of course, but everything is executed well, and sometimes you just want a simple little waffle with fruit of chocolate. Flavors from Fire is a barbecue open flame uh, inspired uh, booth here at Food and Wine Festival. They've got some great meat options here, barbecue options, but also they even have some plant-based meat options here as well. So that's pretty cool. We're starting off here with the Impossible Burger Slider, and then up here we have the smoked corn beef. This drink back here is the Swine Brine. This is our dessert, which is the spiced chocolate tart. And then up here, what I'm most excited about is the chimichurri marinated skirt steak taco. Looks pretty good.
It was surprising. Just for funsies, I'm gonna try the chicken in my swine brine. It, 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 it's gray. The chicken is... That was a mistake. Flavors of fire. Um, it had, I would say it had some in-depth choices on the yeah. menu, for sure. First off, I just want to talk about the swine brine. The swine brine is a mistake and it should go back to the depths of the Disney underground where it belongs. Uh, it was sweet and then it was grossly chickeny salty on the back end. It just, it was, it's, it's, it's not okay. Luckily, everything I tried was really nice. <laughs> the tart was so subtly spicy. It had a really nice kick to it, but also uh, really fudgy and smooth. Loved it. And then the taco, while it was incredibly difficult for me to eat it, the steak was really not, it wasn't too tough, but it wasn't too chewy. It was right there in the middle, had a great texture. And then honestly, what I was surprised by was the pickled onions added a really nice acidity that kind of balanced the sweetness and savoriness of the avocado and the crema and everything. A good balanced dish. However, the smoked corned beef had so many different layers of cheesiness, the university of cheese, if you will. Now, the big surprise for me was the impossible slider. I'm not a huge fan of impossible meat, but the uh, spicy Asian slaw was way more spicy than I intended it to be, especially for Disney. They don't always have a bunch of like, when they say spicy, it's not really that spicy, but it had a really nice kick, so that was definitely a big surprise to me. I will say there are better booths, but this was not bad. I'm gonna give it a six. Oh, I was gonna say seven. So we're pretty close we're together. We're close. Though. I give it seven flames. Seven, seven, seven flames. six and a half flames. We're going in the middle, six go. and a half flames. All right, our next booth is just ahead. It's Australia, um, Australia, not, very good in an Aussie accent, so apologies to any Aussies in the audience. All right, I got my Australian food. So we've got here the grilled sweet and spicy bushberry shrimp with pepper, onion, snap peas, and coconut chili sauce, the roasted lamb chop with mint pesto and potato crunchies, and for dessert, the lamington yellow cake with raspberry filling and chocolate and coconut. Okay, so interestingly, I usually steer clear of Australia because nothing on the menu really calls to me. There's a shrimp I really like at um, the Kenya booth, and there's I'm not a big lamb fan, and I'm not a big raspberry fan, so even the cake doesn't really call to me. I don't know what I've been doing. I really liked everything here. The lamb is super tender, and I've never had like a mint pesto, but mint and lamb? Holy moly, it's such a good combo, and it has potato chips on it, and I'm a big fan of using potato chips as a textural element, so I'm very happy with that. The shrimp is better in Kenya, for sure. Like, this is fine. Um, I like how it has the nice berry flavors to it, but the real winner of this dish are these, like, snap peas. And the cake, super moist, super luscious, and, like, you can't really go wrong with a well-made white cake that has elements of chocolate, coconut, and raspberry. The only reason I would tell you to steer clear is if you don't like one of those things. Otherwise, it's a good cake. Oh no, I'm pleased. And none of this feels too heavy for the hot weather, even the lamb, because the mint pesto really brightens it up. Very happy with Australia. All right, do you like cheese? Do you like bread? The answer is yes. So you need to head over to the Brazil booth. Pau de queijo is incredible. It is a best of the fest dish if you want something that's piping hot eat it then it's so good. The feijoada was kind of a miss this year for us but the Brazil nut pesto on top of the pork belly and the rice dish is really something unique. Overall it's not really a show-stopping booth but if you're somebody who has to do the entire festival you want to complete it you will not be disappointed over here. All right next booth on our list Ireland! I'm excited some of these items on this menu have been best of the best in the past so I think we're gonna have to see if they still hold up. Let's go check it out. We have a fisherman seafood pie, a roasted Irish sausage with calcannon, potatoes, and onion gravy, a warm chocolate pudding cake with Irish cream liqueur custard, and a Guinness Bailey's coffee shake, which I'm really excited about because this has been on our DFB Best of the Fest Ooh. in the past. Wow. Oh, happy face. Yeah, very sweet but almost in a very, it's very refreshingly sweet. It's also a shake, but it's very milky. You get the, those notes of chocolate and vanilla. It's pretty, I don't wanna say delicious. It's, it's, it's like a grown-up chocolate milk. Okay. 
I do agree. This is really fun. It is like a grown-up's chocolate milk. I will say like the stout flavor with the chocolate really complements each other. I like it. Do you need a moment alone? Possibly. I think, imagine you're in Disney World walking around on a chilly autumnal night. Autumnal. That probably means late December and early January knowing Orlando. It's a little chilly, but not too cold. This is the drink that you walk around the world showcase with. I agree. it gets a little cold. What is that big for? Also gotta try the potatoes. It's a nice starchy potato. I think the sausage is kind of, it's kind of on the sweet end of savory. Mm -hmm. It's really not the most impressive sausage. It's comparable to the, um, like a breakfast sausage. Yeah, like a breakfast sausage you get at a Disney World breakfast. Mm -hmm. But it is savory, it is tasty. The onion isn't super forceful, so it's overall pretty flavorful. Mm -hmm. I don't think you'd, you'd regret it if you got it. I just don't think that it might be something that makes you stop at this booth for this item. Fisherman seafood pie. Here we go. I'm terrified. Cassie doesn't like seafood, okay? It's very savory though. I think that if you really enjoy, if you're a seafood lover, I think that that is going to work for you. The top layer is very crusty and it's very soft on the inside. Mm -hmm. And again, savory. It wasn't bad. To give a seafood lover's opinion, I do enjoy this. It's nice like a seafood version of a shepherd's pie. Um, on top it was nice and crispy. And on the inside it's creamy. It's got seafood. I had a piece of shrimp. There's a scallop in there. There's some vegetables in there. Overall, not outstanding, but I'm pleased. It wasn't bad even if it was really repulsing me internally. <laughs> that is so rich and chocolatey. It's, it's the epitome of dessert. You don't want to eat it on a hot day, but you will. One word, rich, but I'll give you more words. Very dense, chocolate, and vanilla, but it also has a little bit of a nutty aftertaste because of the whiskey. Um, but chocolate lovers, you'll love this one. I think the desserts and the desserty drinks are the real winner here. I would dare say that the the cake and the drink are contenders for best of the fest. Okay. I really enjoyed them. This booth isn't one that I'm going to like run to or tell you try this one first, but I'm still pleased with everything. Like I'm not upset. Yeah, even as someone who maybe gets very, very grossed out by seafood, it, the, the pie was fine. It was savory. I could tell that it's good for someone who doesn't get seafood ick. I want to be fair. The seafood, it's fine. It's fine. You'll like it. You'll like it. Last festival, Flower and Garden, Odyssey was a merch location. It is not this year, so you are not going to find any food and wine merchandise. As of opening day, that might change, I guess. But as of today, the only place I've seen any merch is Creations. Let's go inside and check it all. And I do mean all, and there's a lot. Out. Food and wine Tupperware. Food and wine Mirabelle Turvis Tumbler. Casita food and wine shirt. Figment food and wine pass holder tee that looks like a vintage baseball shirt. I love this. Figment pass holder pin. Magical family food and wine cups and pitcher. Casita food and wine food tray. Mirabelle's dress as an apron for food and wine. This is a Mickey food and wine spirit jersey Jacket, ceramic measuring spoon, Mirabelle spatula, a set of two Encanto plates, pot holder, and kitchen towel set. Ooh, food and wine ears, gold velvet, 
nice. Rain Spooner official food and wine shirts. Wine your way around the world. Stemless wine glass. Cutting board or cheese board or anything you want it to be. Wine your way around the world. Ornament. Food and wine mug. Food brings the world together. Spaceship Earth. Food and wine spirit jersey. Mini food and wine tank. Food and wine shirt. Burger hat. Wine your way around the world pin. Food and wine pin. Mirabelle food and wine pin. Madrigal family food and wine pin. Food and wine corksicle. Brash can salt and pepper shakers. Wine glasses. Wine glass holder, bottle holder, slash charcuterie, slash cheese board. Lounge fly, corksicle. Wine glass holder and cheese board for one. Picnic blanket in a bag. And my pick for best merch item, the burger coaster. They have one open here, you can see. You've got so many wonderful choices. The, these are coasters and I'm getting them. Everybody should own these coasters. This is important. Bonjour, friends. That's the amount of French I know, so we're gonna keep it simple, okay? If you've been dying to try escargot, this is your chance to try it out. And if you decide you don't like snails, well, you're in luck because it's wrapped in a warm, flaky croissant that will kind of help you wash it down. It's good. It's so good. I really like the escargot croissant. This booth is always a winner for snail fans and for everyone else. You're gonna find hearty dishes, cheesy dishes, an awesome creme brulee, and that Grey Goose Cosmo, which is a slushy and incredible. The Kenya booth really underwhelmed us this year, unfortunately. Although I have loved the peri peri shrimp in the past and the coffee tenderloin has been well loved as well. Both of these portions were a little small and unfortunately the meat was a little dry this time. Uh, so it wasn't one we loved, but also might be first day jitters. So Greece has had some controversial options over the last few years and a few of them are back for 2023. The grilled cheese is a love it or hate it dish. If you like goat cheese and pistachio, this is one that you should grab. Otherwise, we probably are gonna tell you to opt for the filling lamb gyro or the impossible moussaka if you're looking for something that's plant-based. We'd likely say skip the spanakopita here as well because it's just lacking a little bit in the cheese department. That's Greece. We have made it to the Mexico booth. The Mexico booth is typically a fan favorite, so I'm excited to see what happens here. Obviously, Mexican-inspired dishes here for Food & Wine 2023, baby. Here we have the Tostada de Carnitas, which is uh, braised pork on a fried corn tortilla with black beans, avocado mousse, queso fresco, and chives. Here we have the uh, Taco de Castilla, which is the slow braised beef short rib on a corn tortilla with salsa de chile morita, avocado mousse, and spring onions. Then we've got the flan, which is the layers of traditional Mexican flan and tres leche with guava and cajita. Then we've got our flyaway margarita and our trouble in paradise margarita. If I had one word to describe the Mexico booth for food and wine, it would be tortilla. Ooh. Hear me out. Okay. Really, it's the it's like a doughy texture, the doughy texture of this tortilla. Uh, it's so much better than most of the tortillas I think you're gonna find. We we just had we just had a taco from Flavors of Fire, and it was and it was so hard to eat. This the the tortilla melted in your mouth, and everything inside of it, the braised beef, uh, the avocado. It was just it really, really, completely just melts in your mouth. Uh, I, word of, word of the day, tortilla. However, the flyaway, I don't know what this is. Um, and you shouldn't either. Oh, not good? No, it was, it was not good at all. The tostada, we've had it for a little while and it was still really nice and crunchy. The black beans and the avocado spread were so creamy and then with the tender pork on top, it just kind of melted in your mouth. It had that awesome crunch when you first fit into it. Texturally, I really liked it. Super savory and then the cojita cheese on top. As far as the flan goes, we both tasted it and there was so, there was a texture war. There was a, I didn't love the texture there, personally. There was a battle of the texture yeah. in, from 1822 mm -hmm. and nobody won. No, I, everyone was Loser. Everyone was a loser. I did like the tres, uh, the tre uh, tres leche part of it, just because I love tres leche cake, which is uh, basically a milky kind of uh, milky cake. 
milk soaked cake. Milk soaked cake. It makes so that the bread is mushy. Some people love it. I loved it. Some people don't like that. But I know that I don't like tres leche, mm -hmm. so that's not that big of a surprise. But if you don't like soggy bread, you're not gonna enjoy that. For me, it was the flavors underneath the tres leche, like all all of this. Uh, it was so many different textures and gelatin, and uh, it was it wasn't there. But this is your standard watermelon margarita, uh, tropical, sweet, serene, if you will, but basic. Our next booth is gonna be Shimmering Sips. Shimmering Sips, as the name kind of implies, is sort of the mimosa stop. Mimosas and a couple of treats, but uh, definitely mimosas. All right, I have my stuff from Shimmering Sips. Right here, we have the mimosa plate, which is the three mimosas they offer. We've got the tropical mimosa, which is sparkling wine and passion fruit, orange, and guava juice. So yes, a pog mimosa. We've got the berry mimosa, which is berry fizz, sparkling wine, and white cranberry juice. And then we've got the blood orange mimosa, which is sparkling wine and blood orange juice. And then we also have a treat here. This is the guava cake. This is guava cake with whipped cream and coconut. It is plant-based, so a bit more plant-based representation that I feel like we've seen at Food & Wine in the past. Okay, let's see if we get back here. Oh. Mm. Okay. The mimosa plate is awesome. I think it's one of the best things at the festival. I get super excited for food and wine because of the mimosa plate. My favorite one is the passion orange guava mimosa, and this is usually what I get on its own, but that's because I have issues drinking a lot of fruit juices. Um, so just like one regular mimosa is enough for me. But if you like mimosas, you need to be getting this flight. My goodness, are they good. First of all, a pog mimosa is like the best thing that's ever happened to anyone. Um, this berry mimosa is surprisingly good and I've heard a few people saying this is their favorite. It kind of tastes like, like a grape juice slash cranberry juice mimosa, um, but a little fancier. And then the blood orange tastes exactly like blood orange. There's actually even pulp in it, so that's something to be aware of if you're not into like pulp in your drinks. I will 100% be getting the Pog Mosa again. I love this thing. Pog is passion orange guava. Disney famous juice, and it tastes delicious when you put sparkling wine in it. Uh, the guava cake. So the guava tart last year was one of Breedlove's absolute favorites, and I thought that was what this was going to be because I didn't read it all the way or like think through it. It's very different. It's like an actual like cake in this little bowl. It's a plant-based cake. It's super, super like dense, and it looks like it's going to be moist, but it isn't moist. It's just really, really dense, um, and not in a heavy way, but. It reminds me most of the kind of cakes you would eat out of an easy bake oven, which I feel like I say a lot about plant-based cakes. And I like plant-based food. I shouldn't have that much dairy, so I really like when there are plant-based options. Um, but this one is just not doing it for me. And uh, I think it, I think there are better plant-based desserts at this festival, like that chocolate fondue. Go get that. Well, they definitely changed it from last year. It's still at Shimmering Sips, and it's still guava and the texture on top still looks moose-like. All right, the moment of truth, let's give it a taste. I can already tell that it's cake on the bottom and not a cookie, and that's probably a good thing. It was kind of hard to eat last year. Um, I would pick it up with my hand and bite it. I, a lot of people, the first time I ate it, I, just, I tried to use a fork and knife, and it was a futile effort. So this is a lot easier already to just, you know, dig in with a fork and eat. You know what they did? They combined the guava mousse from last year with the tre tres leches cake um, for, from Flower and Garden. It's actually maybe not the tres leches, it's just regular cake, but it still has that effect and it's really good. Oh, I'm very happy. Then we've got Tangerine Cafe Flavors of the Medina. This space used to be a full year-round restaurant, but now you can count on it to be open during every festival with a few specialty dishes. If you're looking for a substantial plant-based meal, the falafel pita is a total winner here, but everything else is honestly just all right, and we often see repeat items from fest to fest, so it's not one that I would highly recommend, although it is one that I personally love and always do go to. All right, let's talk about Italy. It almost gives us a win this year, but it doesn't quite stand up to the rest of the booth. 
is. However, Italy's normally not that good, so we're kind of impressed. The new focaccia with meatballs is a great snack. The burrata is really kind of a bonus, but the cavatelli is what we'd pick if you're wanting to stop here. It's almost like an Alfredo, but the bacon adds a really nice smoky and crispy crunch. There's also a lemon ricotta cheesecake here if you love a tart, fluffy cheesecake. Oh, Canada. We've made it to Canada. This booth is a major favorite, so expect long lines if you come here. I'm probably in line in front of you. This is one of my favorites. Canada is a very consistent booth. They tend to have the same thing year after year, and the real winner here is the cheddar bacon cheese soup. It's the same one they have inside La Cellier, but you can get it for cheap out here. And I know what you're saying. You're saying, Quincy, it's too hot to eat melted cheese. Where's your food and wine attitude? And you can get a mini steak to pair with it. So Canada's great. They don't switch it up year after year, but if you're only visiting every once in a while, that's not as big of a deal. So expect long lines. Okay, here in India, if you are a Spice fan, this booth is going to deliver for you, which is kind of surprising for Disney World. The curry spice crispy cheese with mango curry ketchup has a heavy curry flavor and the cheese is pretty dense, so don't really expect a light snack out of that. The potato and pea samosa with coriander lime cream had a really nice flaky crust and it packed a bit of a punch. You do get two, so this one is a really nice one to share. When it comes to the chicken tikka masala with fennel spiced yogurt and naan bread, this was a relatively small portion, but very flavorful and almost a little bit too salty. Tea. They also have a mango lassi, which is great on a hot day after all of that spice, but drink it quickly because it gets a little gross if it gets too hot. Did you know there's a scavenger hunt, an official scavenger hunt as part of the Food and Wine Festival here in Epcot? Remy's Ratatouille Hide and Squeak. Wow! Here are stickers that you use to apply on top of each circle that has a country's name. I'm notoriously horrible at scavenger hunts and challenges in general, so someone thought it would be really funny if they sent me to do this scavenger hunt, and um, I'm already panicked. I already have the urge to ask a cast member, which is absolutely against the rules, is Remy on the DVC kiosk? No. Maybe he'll be above flavors of America. <gasps> I just gasped. <laughs> Remy with red peppers. All right, we got to find the red peppers on the sticker page and put it on America. Bell peppers in general. And there is Remy holding up the bell pepper, and now we get to put that sticker on the America Circle. Remy, bonjour Remy. Wait, is that Remy? Remy? I even tried to cheat, and none of the cast members know what I'm talking about. <laughs> they haven't seen him either, so he's very well hidden in France. I'm doing my best. <laughs> I'm I'm not giving up, but I am discouraged, uh, to say the least. I was looking down because I was forlorn, and sometimes you know they say, you know, when 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 in doubt, look up or something. I don't know. Look on the bright side. Look up. Look up. Is that a saying? Well, anyway, I looked down and guess what I found? <laughs> Remy with a with an aubergine. But look, we found two Remy's and while I would love to keep playing this thrilling game, it actually is really fun and very difficult. <laughs> I uh, have to put away the game board and the stickers for today because I don't want to give away all of the secret locations. So you have two to get started from us and the rest, you're on your own. And I think you should play it because it's a great game. So our next booth is Refreshment Port. This is right next to Canada and they serve traditional poutine, sometimes with a little bit of a unique twist. Mm -hmm. 
I'm very excited for this booth because one of the items here everybody really loved last year. Yeah, and it's a frequent best of the best for us over at Disney Food Vlog, so I'm excited to dig in. Woo! So at Refreshment Port, we are picking up the Braised Beef Poutine and the Florida Orange Groves Winery Sparkling Peach. In case you're wondering about the uh, benefits of bringing trays, whenever all the standing tables are full, you get to squat over one. Wow. We should be using it like this. Yeah, we, we were just getting really deep into our work and our poutine. Uh -huh. This is very nice to compliment the big heavy dish that we just ate with the poutine. It's very delicate and sweet, but it's almost a little a little bitter, which makes me think it's kind of more of a of a yellowish peach, not so much a sweet pink peach. I would probably get another one of these. I also would get another one. Maybe right now. So our overall thoughts is I think Refreshment Port is a really easy to please booth. You're definitely not going to walk away disappointed whenever you spend your money here. You really can't go wrong with that poutine. I no. think it's it's so savory and it's just rich. I mean, I think that we don't need to eat anything else. No, I think we're done. Okay, cool. Alrighty, for our next booth, I'm taking this one solo and we're gonna head to China. Let's go. All right, here is my full China spread that I get to enjoy all by myself, even though that makes me a little bit sad. So first off, we're starting with this newer item, which is new to the festival this year. It's the crispy duck bao bun with hoisin sauce. Next up is the pan fried chicken dumplings with house made sweet and spicy sauce. Over here, we have the Dan Dan noodles with spicy pork. For our drinks, we have the fiery dream, and then we also have the firework. Duck bao. This may have just justified the entire festival for me. Dumpling. Okay. <laughs> That's kind of surprising. Okay, this entire booth is, in my opinion, really, really nice, but the best thing that is at this booth and the best thing that I've had today is hands down the duck bao bun. The bow itself is so pillowy and fluffy and just has a really nice kind of bouncy texture almost. And then the duck itself, it's not necessarily gamey, but it's really tender. It just kind of melts uh, as you go to bite into it, just melts. There's no uh, toughness in it at all. And then the sauce itself is so sweet that the rest of the savory elements come together. I will say the bow is on the sweeter side, like the actual bread itself, but I love it. The rest of the booth is really nice. The dumplings are fine. They're just normal dumplings. They're a nice, safe option. The sauce across the top is pretty plain. I expected a little bit of heat from it, but there really wasn't much. For the noodles, they are so creamy, and that was what surprised me. Uh, the peanut butter base in it comes through. It's very sweet. The pork is not as spicy as I had anticipated. Of course, when Disney says spice, um, it's not always super spicy. For the firecracker drink, this is such an interesting like dichotomy, like a little kind of back and forth. The initial taste of the drink is nice and sweet and very light and fruity. And then in the very back of my throat, every time I've had a little sip is a tiny little kick and not necessarily hot, but just kind of you feel the heat. It's really nice. It is not uncomfortable. It's surprising. And I think it makes it really fun. And I think it lives up to the name firecracker, which is really nice. My other drink I'm trying, uh, it's pretty nice. Again, it's kind of heavy on the fruity flavor. I'm pretty pleased with it. If I had to choose again, I would go with the firecracker. It is just so interesting and different and surprising to me. So out of the two things at this booth, if I were to get anything again, definitely the firecracker and definitely the bow. Connections Cafe has a special offering with the Remy Liege waffle. This is a waffle with Remy on it. It's pretty cute, but it's nothing special. The Connections Eatery side also has the Yucatan Sunset Margarita, which is going to be a more full-sized portion than you'll see from most of the other festival drinks. All right, made it to our next booth, which is Spain. Right. Made it to Spain. Made it to Spain. Woo! We have a charcuterie in a cup, oh. which seems to be a really popular item. Mm -hmm. this best. We have a seafood salad, a lovely sangria flight, which I'm really excited about, and we have a paella with chorizo. This charcuterie looks very olive-y, but we've got a selection of imported Spanish meats, so let's dive in. All right, I'm gonna be trying the paella. All right, this paella, I'm pleased with. Um, overall, really great flavor. Chorizo, 
really, really nice. Um, has good flavor. It's bold. It's got a little bit of a kick to it, but it's not like necessarily super spicy. The shrimp is also cooked well, but again, with all the other <laughs> shrimp that I've had today, there's no seasoning. There's no extra flavor. They taste fresh, but there's no flavor there. It's a little on the blander side with the shrimp. There's a lot of thought happening in that forehead. I know. I can feel the wrinkles. Not a whole lot of extra flavor or seasonings are in this dish. Um, everything's it's a little rubbery, which, you know, with seafood, not great. Very oily, I will say that. Um, this is not one of my favorites. Whoa. Whoa, how strange. Oh, what? I don't know. I guess I, I, I had a totally different expectation for the sangria than what it is. This is the white sangria and it's extremely mild, it's extremely light. I was expecting like something a bit more fruitier or even heavier, but it's very light, almost like water. It's almost like um, if you had fruit juice that got watered down with ice. Rosé. Yeah, same thing. Really? Yeah. It's very mild? Mm -hmm. yeah. Very mild. I mean, our ice melted. I mean, look at it. Um, so that's that's what's happening here. Or we have a red sangria. Very interesting. I had, I don't know, I think my expectations for the sangria flight were a little higher than what was delivered. Mm -hmm. So there is a fun activity you can do at the festival, and I know Breedlove has been showing you tons of fun activities, but if you're eating, uh, there is a really fun activity you can do called a Meals Fromage Montage. Fromage montage. So this is a little scavenger hunt, not really. It's like an eat around challenge where if you get five of the menu items from the fromage montage, you get a free item. So there's tons of different items you can get. You can mix and match. If you're like really obsessed with the warm raclette Swiss cheese, you could get that five times and that could be all you get. And then you could get the completer at the end. So you don't have to do this all in one visit. It never expires for the whole length of the festival. I mean, I guess it expires when the festival ends, but for the whole length of the festival, you can collect stamps. And I went ahead and I got booklets from some of our other reporters, from some of our friends, to make sure that I can fill out five, because I got several fromage montage items today, but I've gotten five stamps um, because I had other booklets and I showed it to them and they stamped five times, which means I get the completer treat, um, which means you don't even have to do it all together. As long as you turn in the five stamps, they will mark your stamps as used, so like you can't use them again, but as long as you have five stamps, whether you ate them or not, you get your completer prize. So we kind of banded together to get ours today and I'm going to go see what it is. It's strawberry cheesecake soft serve in a specialty vessel that's very cute and you get to keep um, with mini cheesecake and graham cracker crumbs on top. And I'm excited because it's a million degrees. Did I say that already? Mmm. This tastes like strawberry milk that you get in like your school cafeteria. It's exactly what it tastes like. I definitely get the cheesecake vibes. I love the mini piece of cheesecake on top, but I think this is a fitting end because it's a nice dessert to all your cheese. And it's still cheese. Cheese day. All right, so when it comes to funnel cakes though, vanilla ice cream, candied bacon, and maple syrup are all on top of this funnel cake and you really can't go wrong with that can you it is very rich and if you're not really a bacon on desserts kind of person you probably should skip it one thing to note about festival funnel cakes is they are a lot smaller than your traditional ones so if you want a larger one you're going to need to keep that in mind especially if you're sharing all of your food and wine snacks this is the fry basket we're located right next to test track as you can probably hear uh, and this week is all about fries. Lots of interesting stuff on the menu here, so I'm excited to eat fries. Although, it's weird. Don't you think it should be called Fry Bucket? Because I do. So we have the pickle fries with dill ranch, which are new this year. Over here we've got the adobo yuca fries with a garlic cilantro aioli. Those are plant-based. Then we have the fry flight, which comes with sea salt and malt vinegar fries that are plant-based, barbecued bacon fries with smoked aioli, and sweet potato casserole fries with candied pecans, toasted marshmallow cream, and caramel whiskey. You also, if you particularly like any of the fries in the flight or only want to try one, can get them individually portioned, which I've got here as well. I 
really like everything in this booth. I'm a french fries girl, so that makes sense. My absolute favorites are the yucca fries. Yucca. My actual favorites are the yucca fries, which I'm not exaggerating, taste exactly like buttered Texas toast. Buttered garlic toast on Texas toast. It's amazing. Most underwhelming are the salt and vinegar fries. They're good as a part of the flight because they add something a little more basic, but I really don't, I'm not getting enough vinegar. They're mostly just kind of plain salty fries and they're good fries. They're nice and chunky, but not the most exciting. Overall, I do think Fry Basket is a booth worth visiting during the festival. It obviously doesn't have the most variety, but um, it's pretty tasty. Also, the pickle fries are delicious and I've heard multiple people talking about pickle fries, so I'm not the only one just because I like pickles more than your average person. And the sweet potato has marshmallow and walnuts on it, so instead of tasting like sweet potato fries at a restaurant, they taste like sweet potato pie. I'm here stopping by Japan. Okay, here's our full Japan spread. We have the fire taiko roll, the beef don, and then the teriyaki chicken bun with a sake passion cocktail. I make big claims and I don't want to make a big claim if it doesn't deserve it, but this might deserve a big claim. What is happening? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay, I have gotten to eat some amazing booths today. This collectively, hands down, is my favorite booth that I've personally gotten to try. All of this is so nice, and I think it's collectively a really great um, meal. So the sushi is easily the spiciest thing I've had today, and I say that very, very lovingly. Um, it's really nice. It's a spicy tuna. It's not overwhelming. It's very, very subtle. Most people would not think that there's a lot of spice in here, but mixed with that spicy sauce on the side, it's just enough subtle kick that people can have a nice spicy tuna roll there. I will also say the bao bun. There's a reason it's always been one of the best things at this festival. It is so savory on the inside. The meat, um, is there's a really nice portion of meat in there. The filling is probably like 40% of it, 60% bun. 40% filling. I think that's a really nice kind of ratio there. The beef don is a really nice portion size in my opinion. Because of the beef and the rice, it's a little bit more filling, but it's really nice, really well balanced. The onions have a good caramelization on them, and then there's also some peppers in it, which doesn't add a lot of heat, but it does add a nice crunch and flavor. And finally, hands down, the sake passion cocktail is my favorite thing I've had all day. It is a passion fruit base, so it's very sweet, but it almost reminds me of like a mango drink. Mine is a little bit warm at this point. It's so nice, so balanced. There's not any alcohol flavor, so it's one of those, if you don't like the taste of alcohol and you want a juice, this is a great option. Now I will say, Sage did not love this booth last year. There were a few things he just didn't really enjoy or think maybe you should eat in the heat. I am somebody who absolutely adores lots of different kinds of Asian cuisine. This fits within that. Um, it's salty, it's savory, it's sweet with a drink. Collectively, this is my favorite booth I've been to. Yep, this year-round spot refreshment outpost have, uh, has options for the festival as well. If you're a plant-based eater, we highly recommend you stop here for the spicy good theory, which Breed Love does love. There's also a really refreshing watermelon hibiscus lager you can grab. All right, for one of the last things I get to do today, we are here for the Eat to the Beat concert series, which has rotating concerts. And we're gonna head to the first one tonight at 5.30, and there are actually three shows a night. Now the Eat to the Beat concert series is presented by Florida Blue Medicare, and they have three different nightly shows at 5.30, 6.45, and 8 p.m. right here in the America Pavilion all the way until November 13th. There's some really cool people called Sound Up that's coming later this year in October. Boys to Men is gonna be here for several weekends. There's so much, even Hanson. There's some big names, it's a lot of fun, and it can get kind of busy. So if you really, really wanna see a certain artist, consider coming early or even grabbing one of those dining packages. There is is a lot of fun to be had over here. Now there are dinner reservations for Eat to the Beat just like the other, other festivals that we've been to and there are going to be times to utilize and times to probably not. For example, tonight for Fungified they were incredible but I was able to walk up about 10 minutes before and the theater never filled up. However, for Boys to Men I have seen this place packed. So depending on the artist and how really, really badly you want good seats you might want to consider one of those dining packages I mean you can even eat at Regal Eagle for part of the dining package but they do sell out so if you really really want one grab one in advance the four Joffrey's locations located around Epcot each offer their own specialty festival beverage as well wow, wow what a good graphic that was really nice did you 
you make that? Yeah, I, I made it. There are some food booths that are opening later this year. Those include Hawaii and the Noodle Exchange, both opening on August 15th. And there are four new booths opening on September 22nd as part of Disney's 100th anniversary celebration. Those include Char and Chop, Wine and Wedge, Bubbles and Brine, and Swirled Showcase. Why would they name them all a fun, clever ampersand duo except Swirled Showcase? I'm excited about Swirled Showcase. Me too, but why didn't they name it like Swirled and Showcase? Well, I don't know. Right now, you've still got more than 25 places to visit and eat, as you can see in this video, so don't worry, but more is to come. I made a stop into Odyssey because I heard that it got a complete Muppets transformation, and this was not a lie, but what I didn't expect to find were my two favorite Muppets sitting at a table with all the, literally, all the wings. We have plant-based wings. Yeah. Do you really? Yeah, yeah. would you like to try Are it those plant-based? Yeah. Yes. Oh, I'm, I think I might cry. Oh, buffalo chicken tenders. I might cry. I have the orange cardamom wings, traditional buffalo wings with celery and ranch. We've got the impossible buffalo chicken tenders with plant-based blue cheese. Scorching hot scotch bonnet pepper curry wings. We have peanut butter and jelly sticky wings. We, hear, we liked them a lot last year. We keep hearing about them this year. The garlic parmesan wings and the crispy Brussels sprouts with buffalo sauce. And then we also got two different flights. The first one is a cider flight. And then we have a beer flight. And we also got the frozen pomegranate tea, which is non-alcoholic. And also the pickle milkshake. I mean, I didn't mean to show up just in the exact moment there were plant-based wings out on the table. I really was here for the Muppets, but you know what they say about brewing 2023? Come for the Muppets, stay for the wings. Uh, yeah. So that's what I'm going to do. Stay for the wings, baby. That's nice how they were spawned. Oh, I, I picked up one that has a bite from it. Maybe I'll... You got the lucky nugget. I got the lucky nugget. <laughs> okay. Oh, the lucky tenders. Okay, here we go. It is funny that they're stuck together and the cheese is on one side of the top of the edge of it. But, you know, I like... That's a Muppet thing, I guess. Oh, wow. I love these. I'm not usually a fake chicken person at all. But this fake chicken doesn't freak me out. This is definitely something I will come eat regularly throughout this festival. I've got the plant base. Oh, I actually eat a lot of plant based chicken nuggets at home. My face has about the, the earthiness of the blue cheese. I oh. prefer a ranch. I understand that. I mean, this is really comparable to those. Um, Morning Star chicken nuggets that are plant based that you pick up at your grocery store with Fuji's. It's nice that they have plant based options, but it's nothing super impressive. But because because I think it's like unique to have this option, I think it's really good for what it is. So now I will be trying the traditional buffalo wing. Or Oh, what Nothing is Nothing we've eaten today has had a kick like this. Oh no. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Hot Ones. <laughs> Big kick. Very spicy wings. <laughs> Orange cardamom wings. Now these, of course, because of that cardamom flavor, it's very unique, very specific um, floral notes, almost like kind of piney. But then there's also that orange to it that tastes a lot like an orange chicken sauce that you would eat at a Chinese restaurant. I like these a lot. I'm, I'm impressed. I've got the peanut butter and jelly sticky wings. Ooh. Got a lot of expression happening there. There's a lot happening here. It, this is more sweet than it is savory, and it's exactly what it's advertised. It's pretty. It, it's pretty interesting and unique. And a peanut butter jelly sandwich, if it was a wing. And okay. it's also sticky. It is sticky. <laughs> My next wing, the garlic parmesan wings. All right, those garlic parmesan wings are drenched in garlic and parmesan. No joke, but they are delicious. They're very messy, but 
I mean, what's not to love? Garlic and Parmesan wings. I think these are my favorite so far. We've got the crispy Brussels sprouts with buffalo sauce and blue cheese. And it's very unfortunate, but we don't have a fork, so I'm just picking it up with my hands. I like those Brussels sprouts a lot. I do love Brussels sprouts when they're cooked properly. These are, they're soft. The buffalo sauce is really nice on top, plus um, the blue cheese. The blue cheese isn't super strong flavor. I'd say the buffalo is the stronger flavor of the two, but these are really nice and I would get them again. These were a bit of a letdown last year, but I think that they made a, a strong comeback. They're really savory. I'm, I'm surprised. I, I like them a lot. All right, so Cassie, we've got two drinks here, so we each can pick one. Which this, one did you pick? The frozen pomegranate tea, <laughs> um, as opposed to the more controversial pickle milkshake. It's okay, I'll take one for the team. This one had a topping, but it is Orlando, and so I, it either sunk or it dissolved. Ooh, that's very interesting because if, if you like a Snapple, this is like if a Snapple and maybe like Nerds Candy had a baby. The famous pickle milkshake. It's already day one and this is already famous. So let's give it a try. You know what? I don't hate it. Now, this is gonna be self explanatory. If you don't like pickles, don't get this. I don't like pickles. Cassie doesn't like pickles, but I'm gonna make her try it. I'm terrified right now. Okay, go for it. You can do it. Hi, oh I'm not gonna interrupt. This is a it's, I, I'm really scared right now. <laughs> just, I'm really scared. Just do, do it. it. Just do it. Okay. Oh. <laughs> do you need a second taste? To confirm? I don't think. Oh! <laughs> I don't. I don't think I need to confirm anything. I thought I wasn't gonna have a reaction because I didn't want it to seem like I was like being being a baby about pickles, but ugh, that like is making my, it feels like my body is like, everything in my body is like turning inside out from how much ick that just gave me. Oh, wow, that's a strong review. The most just, the worst just relishy aftertaste just sitting in my mouth. I will say, there is an it's aftertaste. Just drink your tea, it's okay. You don't have to do it anymore. <sighs> and there is one more entertainment offering where there's a special show on Spaceship Earth at night. As you can see by the fact that we are squatted up filming it. We even got some off-camera reporters here filming as well. So, so many people are filming the show right now. We've gathered, we found everybody. Hi friends. Hi friends. All right, favorite parts of the festival. Let's go, Kathy. Hang out with Fry all day. Emma. Japan. Fry. Pickle milkshake. Free love. Guava cake. And for me, fondue, plant-based. What? Yay. What? Oh. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. And now go watch our perfect day in Epcot. We'll Bye. see you there. This is for you. What? Ah! No, 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 no. I lose it. You can't run in Disney World, you guys.